Welcome on my presentation on testing states about Cypress and PlayVault limits. I hope you like the conference so far and this, this presentation will lift your expectation. My name is Maciej Wyrodek. I am working at Displate. Displate is a company that is making cool metal posters. You can see them behind me here and on the picture on the slides. I also have the YouTube channel called IT Morning when I am discussing different articles from the IT world. And unfortunately, the channel is in Polish, but maybe from some of you, this will be useful. And today we are here, as I mentioned before, comparing Cypress and Playboard. We'll be looking at the limitation of both frameworks and what they are good at and where they are struggling. We will start with looking at the project because I don't like to comparing the stuff in Void. If you want to compare them in Void, you can find the tables with the different statistics on different page but we want to look at some real case uh, where we see the limitation working. The, um, to see that limitations, the, we will start with the one of the biggest, the syntax. After that, we'll look at the another limitations that are affecting continuous de deployment, continuous integration, which is management of configurations, logging, and organization of the test. The last but not least, we'll look uh, slightly at the different um, availabilities of the frameworks. This part is the least valuable for you because the frameworks are developing. I am recording it at the 8th of August 2022, and this conference is in uh, one and a half months from the moment I'm recording it, so I'm gonna bet you some of the things I'm talking here in that section won't be uh, up to date. And I want to make one thing clear. I'm not comparing these frameworks to say which is better. Both are very good, uh, uh, mature frameworks that are kind of pinnacle of what you can do with coded automation right now. I am uh, sure in a few years we'll see different tools uh, going to that sp uh, space, but right now I think Cypress and Playwright are the go-to tools in most case scenarios. But saying which is better is wrong. You should be asking yourself which is much more for you. I'll give you an example. What is better, scrambled eggs or omelette? Both are made from eggs. Both are food, but are kind of different dishes and comparing them one to one, it's pointless. So I want to make it clear. Look what is better for you, not which is better in general. And Let's start. The project I am uh, here to talk to you about is Displayed Brand Control. Uh, in short, when I joined BDisplayed, a new project has started. We are selling, as you know, artworks, the metal posters. Some of those artworks is coming from artists that we have a direct deal. They have their own brand on, not brand, they have their own, let's say, shop on our page but they have very little control on how the layout looks. They can maybe check, uh, change a few things and create collections. On the other hand, we have brands, the big brands like Marvel, Star Wars, Stranger Things, which well are much bigger customers and they are making much more demands. For example, the license for the product may be not on every market. So to cater to the needs, uh, the new system had to be created, the brand control mechanism, which allows for creation of brands, setting the layout, creation and addition of collection. And what is most important, management of the artwork, starting from the tags, legal info, because uh, the plates for the, for the brands have special legal info on the other side, to the restriction of the region. And I am a strong believer in creation of the data on the fly. From perspective of our automation test, uh, to check one of the latest elements, but the most important one, artworks, we have to create a lot of data in front. We have to create collection, we have to set up the layout, and we have uh, to create brands. Well, actually from the other end. First brand, then using brand, we have to use its ID to create layout. Then using layout ID and brand ID, we can create collection. And then with the brand ID and collection ID, we can add artworks. We have lots of tests on the adding artworks, but we have to do 
lots of stuff beforehand. As I said before, I don't want to use static data. I am believer that the test should be created on the fly. The data and delete after the test is needed. Uh, the data is needed. And in that case, we have two options. Either use UI, which would be long and brighter, or create data by the API. And this is the place where we start to seeing the first difference in the approaches. So for starters, let's look at the structure of the simple test in Cypress. This is very basic test. So first, Cypress has its own runner for uh, creating the test and running them. It's based on the Mocha. It's kind of heavily modified Mocha, but it's still Mocha. And uh, it's using the uh, syntax. So we have the describe, which you can say is kind of the test suit. Uh, of of the test. There should be one described per, uh, per file. You can do it more, but kind of it's assumed that you have one in the file. And after that, we have our test. Here, the word it. The test itself is using the Cypress DSL, domain-specific language. So standard test in the Cypress, standard chain of the events is starting from the, the symbol CY, symbolizing Cypress. After that, we after dot we can do our action. In this case, we are going to visit some page, page. Using Fluent interfaces, we are going to ask for its title. And again, with the Fluent interface, we are uh, making assertion. Of course, we can also break the chain. For example, in our case, we are making another assertion. We are making assertion if there is information about helmed graffiti somewhere on the page. It is simple, it is very readable, and I think it uh, anybody can easily write it. This is the strong suit of Cypress. We don't need to even understand much of JavaScript. As long as we are writing simple tests, we are basically living in its domain-specific language to the point that I believe that uh, um, learners don't need much JavaScript to start writing the Cypress test, simple Cypress test. Unfortunately, here the world ends. If we want to make something much more advanced, like in our case, the API call test, it's starting to look not as good. Uh, this is such simplified example. I'm not using here our display API because I cannot from the legal reason. But the page called Star Wars API will be working as substitute. So this test may be not exactly valuable from business perspective, but it's showing the dependencies what I want you to show. So we need to do our few consecutive uh, API calls. We are starting with making the side request call, which is going to get us some information. We want to use this information. Cypress is working in asynchronous way. So if we want to use the response from that information, we have to do it in this chain. That's why we are using word then. Um, if you know JavaScript, you probably are aware of uh, JavaScript promises, which is one of the mechanism for asynchronous call in Java. This is basically promise. If you look into the data of the implementation, it's not 100% clear uh, promise. It's a little more complicated, but for our purpose here and now, it is promise. And um, uh, if we want to use that value later, we can write it to our variable. And inside that chain, in, inside of that then, we can make another call with our value but if we want to use the response, we have to use again word then and go deeper and deeper and deeper. Uh, as you can see, it is quite heavy nesting. Anybody who knows anything about clean code will tell you that nesting is not good. And uh, going too deep is problematic. So this is also something that before async and await happened in JavaScript was known as promise hell nesting inside of nesting inside of nesting um yeah this is not good what we can do differently 
Well, we can do quite a lot of things differently. First, we can use the word before. As you can see here, I'm using before to make some calls. This is kind of splitting the test. It's not entirely proper way of the splitting. It's kind of hack, but this is the hack that we chose to use in our company uh, after looking at its trade-off. So, as you can see, I'm here again in one before making the request and I am writing the response to the homeward, uh, to the variable homeward. So why I am not making the next call just here? Because as I said to you before, this is asynchronous call. The homeward variable may not be yet ready. Why? Because in the moment when the SI request was called, this SI request can be called already. It won't be waiting for the then chain to happen. So the homeward value, if we are lucky, may be already filled or it may not be filled. In my experience, usually it's not. But if we finish our before, the whole section has to wait to finish all calls inside that section before it closes. So doing that hack, we can kind of make it much more readable. There are a few issues. Since this is before from Mocha, it doesn't allow for any parameters from any titles. So we would have to use the uh, comments above to make it more readable. It's not the perfect solution and it's actually a hack. The more ideal solution is using the word wrap. And how does it work? Basically, wrap is like assignment of the values, but it is created inside the Cypress internals. So we are making our call here for the request. Then we are uh, again using our word then to use the value, but we are wrapping that value inside alias called homeward. Now, when we call homeward with add symbol, we'll be using that value. Of course, it's not anything that simple. To use it, we have to use the keyword get, like we would try to get some elements from page. So now by writing sci get homeward, this will uh, make wait until this variable is available. And if you want to use that variable, then we have to again use the word then. Inside of this, we can make our calls, make another wrap, etc. etc. So it's little more code, but it's still much more readable. Do you see the problem with this? What if I need to use two or three variables again? For example, as I said, we need to use the brand uh, ID and collection ID to create artwork. So I would have to make the homework, uh, make the get homework and inside of it, make get film in our case film. And inside I can make a uh, finding my call. So we are also going to the nesting hell. It's, it is problematic. If we are needing to make such uh, nested calls, uh, it is problematic. So is it issue with the Cypress? Not necessarily. Cypress has its own philosophy of writing test. Cypress is designed for fast developer tests that are easy to write easy to maintain locally. It's not made with things or with the long complicated test in mind, like in this case. And so how Playwright will deal with the situation? In case of Playwright, the syntax is looking at the first point a little more complex. Let's open our case and compare it to our, uh, our case from uh, the Cypress. Okay, as you can see on the left, we have the Cypress test. On the right, we have the uh, Playwright test. First thing, what you have to notice, we need to use imports to get some elements of Playwright into the test. Then we have our uh, collection, the, our test uh, suit. Cypress for Playwright is using many test runner. You can use whatever you want, but it also comes with its own runner packed in. This runner is using the structure test describe 
Personally, I prefer normal describe rather than test described. And inside of that, tests are described as test, not as it. Personally, I am actually a bigger fan of the test. And here we have to use work async, word async, because this is asynchronous test. This makes a lot of more noise. For example, we have to add to each line, each comment, the word await for the synchronization. But thanks to it, we can write our test from top to bottom. Unfortunately, Playwright doesn't have such nice DSL. So we have our first, we are making our um, go to page comment. Next, we are making expectation and here, Basing on what we are provided here, in our case, we provided the page object, we can do assertion on the title. Again, assertions are working in many different ways. Uh, title usually accepts the regex. And on the end, if we want to get the element, to make some assertion on the element, we have to do await, expect for the element, and make the page locator for that element, and check if it's visible. So, this is kind of more complicated than our case for the Cypress. It's much more noise. At first, it is much harder to read. But let's look at what happens when we are going to use our case for the automation and for our reward automation. So, oh, sorry, I, I didn't open the right file now. Let's move it here. And what we can see here is again, lots of noise. We are using some elements, the config, that kind of stuff. First, we are making our request. We have to wait for the response and we are assigning it to some variables. Again, we are not using any dense. We are going straight down in our file. Unfortunately, then something what I don't like, even if you want to extract our value to the uh, value JSON, we have to make our, to use a weight. Again, here we have our uh, people body. With this body, we can make another request, made another uh, assertion, uh, for another extraction, another call and another call. But we are going straight down. If this is reminiscent of anything, it's very similar to our call for uh, before. We're going straight down, but with less hassle. Why I have here console logs? This was experiment I was doing before to actually see how the stuff is working. And this for some of you may think, okay, but this is not, not a lot of issue. This is not complicated. Yeah, the playwright, when you are working with JavaScript using awaits regularly in your work, it's not complicated. You are used to this uh, kind of formula. And let's sum up the comparison. Playwright has much more clear structure but when we wanted to make much more complicated test, that structure was its weak point. It showed us that we have either follow its philosophy or we will be screwed. This is kind of similar to uh, what my friend me, uh, told me once. Um, not so long ago, uh, my friend being the front end lead made a case, uh, the POC proof of concept at his company for the Cypress. I told him later, try Playwright. I think Playwright will be better in your case. And I know I'm showing you the messages in Polish. I will be translating to you them. Uh, he said, well, after spending some time with both tools, I can say that Cypress is uh, very good for simple test, uh, especially when there are not much complication. It's very easy to write. It's easy to understand. It's very intuitive. And there are no thousands of weights on every line uh, to make it work. But it's kind of similar to Angular. Basically, we are using the API of that tool, not the JavaScript, which means we are losing lots of controls. And if something is happening unexpected, we usually don't know what, what is happening and it's very hard to fix. But 
Playwright is different. In the case of Playwright, we need uh, the documentation is much harder to get, but when we get through it, we know what is happening in the code and we can fix it. And I kind of agree with him. Playwright is giving us much more control in the code, but at the cost of much more code to write and much harder uh, entry point. Well, but let's go further. So we have our tests and we want to run those tests. In case of CI CD, we won't be able to see those tests live. So what options we have to then check what is happening in the test? Let's go back to our code. In case of the uh, Cypress, oh, sorry, I broke something in the test when I was playing in the code. Uh, let's run the one of the test. In case of the Cypress, we have the video recording, which is kind, which is recorded the screen that you are seeing here. We have the all information available here, recorded in our code, which we can later download from our CI CD to see how they actually performed. Unfortunately, if anybody of you used ever videos, uh, you realize um, that this means lots of uh, clicking space to stop the video at the right time. We don't have the option uh, for writing to the logs. Yes, we can write to the logs, but this will be the logs visible here. We will see information in this log uh, here, not inside our pipeline log. As with everything in the Cyp case of Cypress, there is plugin for that. And this is something that you can kind of make drinking game because if there is some problem with Cypress, there is probably plugin for that. In case of Cypress, there is plugin called uh, Cypress Terminal, which allows us to collect information to the logs. Um, output, let's see. Terminal. npx run. And pay. Uh, one moment, I need to remember which comment I have set up for the text. Yeah, let's use this comment. npx and pm cypress run. Ah, sorry. And then test. If I haven't screwed anything, if you haven't screwed up anything right now, in the commands log, we will see our results from the uh, from the test. This is the standard video uh, 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 screen that you are seeing when you are running the test in the pipelines with information what is using, what kind of files were found, and the specs. Here is the uh, tool, the plugin which is showing us information: what calls were made, what ha uh, didn't happen correctly. And this is third party solution. What does it mean? Not so long ago, Cypress 10 came out. Lots of plugins needed update. Not, of all, not all of them got that because some are no longer actively developed by the users. In that case, you either had to do your own uh, implementation of, for the fix, Sometimes hoping that someone would merge it to the actual uh, plugin or create your own copy of that plugin. And in my opinion, this is great. That plugin is great. I have it in my uh, pipeline because not every not everywhere videos is useful. So what is the alternative for the uh, for our tests in case of Playwright? Playwright first writes normally to our console log. So if we run uh, any test, sorry, if we run any test, we will see the results in the console log. So let's let it write, run. Mm. Which one it was? moment i need to check in which test i have the information let's run the other test the syntax 
Yeah, as you can see, we put our information here in our log. There are visible here. No, they are normally visible in our code. Additionally, as with the Cypress, we have some sort of uh, a dashboard with some of the tests. Here we can uh, download the test, run them locally. As you can see, there is not much to see. We can download trace and we can see the recording here. How it actually looks, what the call were made. This is another tool that Cypress allows out us. It's the trace, the ability to download the file called trace and replay the stuff action by action uh, on our machine, similarly to Cypress dashboard. So, I'm, not, I'm not sorry, the uh, Cypress UI which we're using before. The difference is Cypress UI doesn't allow you to download the replay and use it locally. You can only use the video. So here I'm going to say uh, this is kind of difference of preferences, but we have different approaches on both tools. Going forward, another thing that we have to take into account is um, connected to CI/CD, our ability to organize the tests. First thing is reports. In case of Cypress, we have some reports generated with using Cypress dashboard. Unfortunately, Cypress dashboard is paid. There is alternative sorry, Cypress, which is free. But um, if you are one, if you want to write more automation, you probably need to either uh, get sorry, Cypress or uh, Cypress dashboard because it is connected to another feature, which we'll be talking later. It, what is, how it is in the case of Playwright? Playwright is here again on the philosophy, get your own. By default, uh, Playwright is able to generate Allure reports, which you can download and upload to your Allure uh, portal, um, or you can implement or use already implemented any other reporter. Cypress also allows us to create our own reporters, um, but in most cases, people are using Cypress dashboard for the test results. So what about the test organization? Here is the biggest issue in my opinion. Cypress by default doesn't have test organization. Cypress allows you only to organize tests by the folder. You have no option to run tests by any other, other way. You can point to direct uh, to say one test to run. You can say run tests from that folder. Or you can say run tests that follow some pa naming pattern, like for example, uh, using the simple CY, that kind of stuff. You have no option by default to manage them by tag or anything else. What's doing the Playwright? Playwright is making here a lot more customiz customization again. In our uh, Playwright config, we have lots of options to manage the test. We can split them on different projects. This is one way which we can set up for each product completely different uh, test to run, completely different workers, names, that kind of stuff. And by default, it has also implementation of the grep, which allows us to uh, manage tests by the names. So for example, we can la uh, run tests that, for example, are uh, having tags that we create for them. Usually tags in case of the, um, the playwright are put in the test name with the at symbol. Cypress has something similar. It's called um, it's called Cypress Grab. It's again plugin, which you can install, which also allows us to run tests by the names and the tags. And again, the plugin not so long ago wasn't fully functional because the update to 10 broke it. At this point, the plugin is fixed, but we have the issues that for some times we as displayed weren't able to update our uh, test frameworks because the plugin wasn't yet ready. Um, so this is one more thing. 
Last thing connected to all of this is CICD, the whole ability to run tests. You want to run tests in parallel. How you can do it in Cypress? You need either Cypress dashboard or the sorry Cypress, which is orchestrator to your test. Without it, you won't be able to run tests in parallel. Well, you can split them manually to run on each ag agent, but you have no option of parallelization different way. The both uh, sorry, Cypress and Cypress dashboard can um, uh, organize your test for the most efficient way. And, but you are, you don't have ability to run more than one test on one machine. Playwright, on the other hand, doesn't have great mechanism to split tests on many machines. But if you have powerful machine, you can say in that machine, hey, use that many workers to organize our test. Again, you have ability to, uh, to put the information about workers. And on, based on this information, that many tests will be run at one time. Okay. So let's fast forward because we are getting out of time. The last thing what I wanted to mention of you is the yeah, kind of table showing different abilities of the both frameworks. Again, this is table that is constantly changing because some features that one framework has are coming to another and both frameworks are constantly developed. For example, when I was starting making this presentation a few months ago, Cypress didn't have support for cross-domain support. If you started, for example, on one domain, you weren't able to change domain in the test. Now you can. The, uh, the access to the file system is still limited to Cypress, but you can do much more with it now. Cypress lives on the plugins. You can basically find plugins for the most stuff. Not always working great, but you have great customability on that aspect. And in case of the parallelization, as we discussed previously, uh, Playwright allows us to do great stuff on one agent and Cypress allows us to better manage many agents. And from the most important information, I would like to mention learning curve. Playwright has much steeper learning curve. The informations for getting inside it are much harder to get. You have everything on the page there. But unless you read some uh, tutorials, have good information of the JavaScript and or TypeScript, it won't come to you easy. In case of uh, Cypress, basically any question you want to get, uh, uh, get the answer, you will find it easily in documentation. There are some secrets, but it's much easier to get. At this point, I want to make easy summary. As I said before, in my company, we chose the Cypress for that project. It was a mistake on my part. Why? I wasn't as, uh, as uh, uh, keen on a few issues with Cypress. I didn't realize that the, um, the nesting, the syntax, would be affecting our ability to write tests so much. Because it may become simple, well, this is just syntax. But right now, we have issue with managing our test data we have to make lots of changes in test data and it's not working very well. The, the reason one which, why we chose the Cypress was other project in our company has Cypress and it's working very well for that project. We have the knowledge on in our teams, so that was the big point. And we have lots of novice people with test automation. So the Cypress is a good tool for them. And the POC didn't show us the, the issue with the syntax. This is something that was on my side. I didn't choose the right test for that. But right now I'm I'm considering making the another POC with Playwright with the actually what we learned to see if actually changing to Playwright because this is still point when it's still viable option. It will it will give us any benefit because I am also aware of Sanket Cost policy. And as I said before, selecting private was wrong choice uh, for us. Unfortunately, there is uh, no option for you to ask question because this is a recording, but I will be on the Slack channel. I will try to answer your question, maybe not immediately, but I will try to answer them. 
So, if you want to con uh, come with anything from this presentation, I want you to remember there is no, no discussion about which framework is better. There is discussion which is better for your choice. You need to think on your scenario, where, how you will be using and consider some real case example. Don't go for the easiest one because this may bite you. I know easy scenario is simple to write, but let's take some much more complicated. Even if it will take you for writing that scenario longer, it will be giving you much more information. So the presentation will be available on the page, the same with the link to the, my repo. At the end, you can find the sources I was using. Thank you again for uh, being on my presentation and I hope to see you in the Slack channels. See you.